bubbles all around the float. Ooh, they take my bag. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah. Can't see it. Where is it? Oh, it's down here. Yeah, it was sort of... Um, See where the bloody thing's gone. Uh, it's right down the side of the meat, I think. Well, hi. Um, you probably wondered what, what's happened to me. It's been well over two weeks since I've been out, and there's various reasons for that. And um, I'll, I'll perhaps mention what, what, why, that, why that's happened while I'm fishing rather than prattling on now. So I've come over today um, to the clay pit. I'm going to spend a few hours on the side ponds um, which are looking quite desperate really. The water's very low and there's a film on them. Um, this hot, hot weather's no good for anything really, fishing wise. Uh, probably only stay a few hours until it gets too hot to carry on. Um, I was contemplating going to a stream, but I've struggled on the streams this year. They seem to have more weed than ever in this summer. And I couldn't really face um, walking up and down the stream in the sort of temperatures that are forecast for today. So let's get fishing, shall we? Okay, here we are on the side pond. Um, you can see by the reeds that the level is well down. Um, and it's well down, you can tell here. Um, see by the depth as well it's usually I think a good foot more than that I've um, I've put in a bit of sweet corn I've got sweet corn and cheese paste today basically what I had in the um, in the house uh, I was really deliberating whether to come fishing or not because of the temperature um, as I mentioned in the intro um, I was thinking perhaps of going to a stream but I just couldn't face marching up and down um, anyway we see how we get on here. Usually it, it produces a fish or two, so hopefully we'll catch something. Um, don't know if you can hear that bumblebee <laughs> buzzing around my head. In such a small pond and in this temperature, um, it's by no means certain the fish are going to feel, feel very hungry. <laughs> in fact, they may feel a bit um, lethargic, I would think. But we can only but try. As I say, I haven't been out for over two weeks, so um, I wanted to come out this week. I was going to go out last week and then something cropped up and I didn't go. And then, of course, the um, temperature changed and we're now in a late summer or Indian summer heat wave. It's forecast to get up to 27 degrees today. There's a little bit of a breeze here which is nice. Uh, turn my collar up so I don't get sunburn on my neck. long sleeve shirt on, keep the sun off a bit. As I say, that breeze is quite welcome. But, um, I'm not sure today, to be honest, the conditions are not great. There's a couple of the um, guys who look after the place here when I arrived I was chatting to them and apparently someone got an 18 pound carp out of this um, out of this pond which is um, remarkable on many many fronts really it's remarkable there's an 18 pound carp in this little place but it's also remarkable anyone managed to land it given how 
little room you've got to um, to manage the fish once it's hooked. Um, I certainly wouldn't be able to manage it on this tackle. Talking of tackle, um, this is a hardy marksman rod. Um, specimen Avon, they call it. I bought it quite a few years ago. Um, I don't think Hardy make uh, coarse rods anymore. I'm not sure, but certainly they don't make this one anymore. And it was on sale, still reasonably expensive, but it was on sale. Perhaps I guess because it was end of range. It's got a fair bit of beef to it, and um, with the tension here, you've got to hold on to them. Um, they tried to get in obviously all the brambles here and the reeds. So I thought I'd give it a try here. Um, hasn't been used a lot, as you can tell by the um, quality of the cork. <laughs> Not too much soiling on it. Um, whether it'll get a chance to prove it's worth or not remains to be seen. There's certainly nothing showing any interest so far. I said in the intro that I, I haven't been out for a couple of weeks for various reasons and um, one was a bit of a car problem which took up a couple of days or so to sort out and um, and I think I might have mentioned in a previous video that having had my right hip replaced uh, the left one's now playing up so not wanting to um, end up in the situation I was in with the right one which got to the point that I was almost crippled by it I went and had a consultation on the left one um, and um, the consultant said basically yes it was worn but it wasn't worn sufficiently to warrant an intervention an operation so I'm, I'm now stuck with a hip that is very stiff when I walk for any distance or anything over 20 minutes now and it stiffens up and it can be quite painful and I've just got to soldier on with that until it gets to the point where um, <laughs> I've got to have something more serious done but it's not a very good prospect really and it, it sort of doesn't fit in well with my liking of um, walking up and down streams um, so um, that's where we are with that. Um, so that took a bit of time out. And then we had another hot spell um, during that period, which I decided not to go out because it was so hot. Um, even though I've come out today, but I was getting to the point where I thought, well, if I don't go out, I'm never going to go out. It's going to be another week of this, I think. So that's basically... Um, where we're at. A few things coming together to um, cause me not to get out fishing. Well, I just had a bite. Um, not much of a bite. It just dipped under and I, I didn't contact anything. So, um, it's a small rod or something, I don't know. But at least something. Have a look at it just thrown a bit more sweet corn in to try to um, entice them. I didn't want to put too much in if they're not feeding that that well. I don't want to put a lot of bait in. There was a voice in, inside me this morning saying really it's going to be too hot, you shouldn't go. It's going to be too hot for you, it's going to be too hot for the fish. Uh, but as I say, having not been out for what I, quite a bit over two weeks, I just fancy going somewhere. And this is this is very local to me, and there's a bite. Ah, uh, at last. I don't think it's much, but it's, it's a bite. Oh, is it? 
the accretion actually it's it's giving quite a good account of itself even though it's oh no it is a diddly diddly tense absolutely diddly diddly tense let's put you over here in case you drop off so we caught a tense on the, the rod but oh, don't you still with me just hooked in the edge ah yeah it's a good job i put you over the mat isn't it you little wheel yeah, look at him, perfect. Perfect, but very, very small. <laughs> well, let's put you straight back, shall we? Um, right, one tinch. <laughs> Not quite um, what I was expecting. Uh, right, that's good. Right. Time to um, try a bit of cheese paste. Straight out the fridge this morning into this little thermos thing, so hopefully it will be pretty firm and it won't go all gooey in the sun. Don't need much on this little hook, so just enough to. Hope it stays on the hook, shall we? Well, there doesn't seem to be much more interest in my cheese paste than there was the corn. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, having said that, I'm going to obviously provoke something to bite. It feels a bit better than the titty tench we had earlier. <laughs> it's a diddy, um, it's a diddy crucian. I think it's a crucian. It's a bit strange actually. Oh yeah, it is a cushion. Mm. Seems to be the day of the small fish today. Yeah, it's a diddy cushion to, to follow a diddy tench. But anyway, there are fish down there. Diddy diddy diddy. Alright, let's put you back in, shall we? We'll call up in the knife. I think there might be some more bubbles around my float. Which is interesting. Float's not moved though. But, um, If we're lucky, something's rooting around down there. Yeah, it's definitely some more bubbles just come up right around the throat. And should we see what happens? Should I 
Oh, this hardy rod is, it's a bit heavy to hold. There's bubbles all around the float. Oh, they take my bag. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah. See where the bloody thing's gone. Uh, it's right down the side of the meat, I think. hook and it's not always going to work. Uh, oh, that's unfortunate. Those bubbles around my float, it all really looked promising. Yes, yeah, just let you rest there a bit because you're giving your all, haven't you? Good tension today. Oh, let's put you back in, shall we? And that was on cheese paste. Well, if that's the only decent fish I get today, I'll be more than happy in these conditions. It's, it's stinking hot now. Um, I don't know what the temperature is, but they forecast 24 by 11 o'clock and um, it's now midday, so it's probably more than 24. The only saving grace is that we've got this breeze, which is providing a bit of um, cooling. But the sun's beating down on my back. Unfortunately, there's a little tree just to the left of me, and um, another half hour, or so it may it may go behind that for a while. Yeah, that was classic really. I, I'd seen the bubbles earlier on and um, I cast over there, which was a bit chancy because I'd already lost one little gear over there. And the bubbles started literally, the, the float was surrounded by bubbles, so I was just waiting for it to go really. <laughs> yeah, classic.
but I nearly lost it. It was really embedded in those reeds there. I lost sight of it. I, got, I lost sight of the float. So I wasn't sure where it had gone. Then it had gone right down the side there, but fortunately the hand lining got it out. But with a barbless hook, you give it a bit of slack line, you, you could lose the thing. So um, anyway, we succeeded in the end. Well, that cast was um, almost touching the reeds when it landed, so I'll leave it there. I don't usually get that close to the reeds. I don't know if you can see the brim of my hat. I sort of pulled the brim down of the hat to try and keep the sun off. So apologies if it's in the picture. thing with being close to the reeds is that's where the, the carp that are in there sort of um, hang out and um, there's one keeps plopping over there I'm sure it's a carp and I don't mind smaller carp but if I hooked anything decent they have quite a job I think playing with it. Really need glasses of this much. <laughs> yeah, something is having a go, I think. Float lifted slightly, I saw the clear perspect under the coloured section appear and then it dropped again. I guess if it's anything it's going to be a crucian. Whatever it is, I'm making a meal of it. Oh yeah, that was a definite knock. Oh, jeez. Just trying to get in those reeds. <sighs> I'm just holding on for dear life here, but I'm not going to get in there. <sighs> First sight of it again, I don't get me. Where's the bloody line? Oh, yeah, it's getting in here again, isn't it? Little buggers they keep getting. Get you out of there. Last one, perhaps. Yeah, it's definitely a bit bigger than the last one. I 
this thing on there. Just drop you on the scale, see where you're at. Right. Four and nine. Net weigh is fourteen ounces. So four and nine. That's five ounces off, isn't it? So, is that three third? No. Three eleven. About eleven, I think. My maths is correct. This little vacuum thing is a little flask, really, I'd call it. It's keeping my cheese lovely and cool on my paste. Because the trouble in this sort of hot weather is cheese paste just sort of becomes all fluid. It's working very well. <clears throat> Oh well, two reasonable tench. I think my maths was correct, £3.11 that one. Taking off the net. You don't get anything too big in here because they ask that if you get anything over four and a half pound that you um, Pop it in the um, in the main lake, and if you catch any carp in here, you're supposed to put them back in the main lake. They shouldn't be in here really. I think people have transferred them in the past because the main lake is very much a, a carp water, but a very difficult one. It's not one of these commercial type carp waters. It's only for the de dedicated carp people, I think. Well, yeah, that, that, that fish or that bite was playing around for ages. There's some bubbles there. Is that my float calls out when it went in? Or was there bubbles near my float? Yeah, um, that float was bobbling and messing around for ages and I really thought it was a smaller fish. But then when it went away, it wasn't. So, just goes to show, don't assume anything. One o'clock, um, or thereabouts, ten to one. I'm going to stay to about two, by which time I'm going to be so hot. Uh, I don't know about the cheese melting or the cheese paste melting, I'll be melting, I think. That's two fish of nearly snag meat, and no, I've nearly lost. I'm in those, those reeds down there. They make a beeline. Tom is I can't always see where the lines end during the water. I lose the um I lose where the fish is and I'm not putting the right side strain on. One minute they're over there fighting to get in those reeds, the next minute they're diving in here. And when you can't see the float because it's still underwater, you um you don't always see where the line goes in. Breeze comes up, it's a bit, a bit of a problem. Um, well, for the flow, it is, it's not a problem for me, it's quite nice. I 
Not sure how many people use cheese paste here. <laughs> Probably a bit novel for the fish. I would guess maggots is quite popular. The guy who was doing some, um, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, this feels even heavier. Oh. This is a funny sort of fight, it's a sort of doggy. This isn't tearing around, this is more of a dogged sort of fight. Let's stand up and get better control. Ah, oh no, it's a tension. I thought we might have been a broom for a minute. Why are you so lethargic, mate? You're not fighting at all. Hmm, oh, that's unusual. Hmm. I wonder if you're alright, Mr. Tench, because you really did not battle at all. Hmm, you see alright? Uh, no, it's gone through and it's caught the net. Boy, you were only just talked to me. Look at that, it's right in the edge. Right in the edge of the lip. Gee, was he. Yeah, nice fish. You sort of gave a few heavy thumps and then you, you threw in the towel, really. There we go. Don't stop fighting now. Give yourself a mischief. Might as well just put you quickly on the scales because we've got the scales literally sitting there. That's interesting, about 314, so that makes you exactly three pounds. Something's gone behind that little tree just to the left of me. It's hardly a tree really, like a sapling, but it's just enough to keep the sun off me a bit, which is good. Now, let's try a bit of corn. I've been putting corn out there for a long time now. Let's see what happens when we put some corn on. Okay, uh, a bit of two grains of sweet corn out there now, so we we'll see what happens. Had three tench. Well, that guy came along and started chatting to me, and um, uh, I'm not sure if I had the video on when I lost that fish. Um, when I sort of lost it, the hook pulled. But I was desperately holding on to it to try and stop it getting in the reeds over there. So, um, it, interesting, I had a lot of slime on the line when the line came in. So, I assume it was a tench. Carp don't tend to be that slimy. And bream certainly wouldn't pull that hard. So, um, 
I don't know, I just changed the sweet corn as the first cast and whoosh, off it went. Unfortunately, um, the hook pulled. Oh, that's definitely a bite, but is it small fish, which it might well be. I think that's what we're getting now. I think the tench have um, switched off. Yeah, I think this is um, this is going to be the last cast, definitely. Um, I think it's now got too hot for man or beast. But never mind. We've done quite well. Quite pleased with those three tench. It's probably more than I expected when I arrived this morning looking at the um, level of the water and considering the temperature. Oh my god, Jesus, I just said that tonight. Oh, it's got this little snake. I think I've got it out. And he said I was just kind of pack up. And it's small fish. It's not a small fish. Shaking its head around a bit. Oh, I do believe it's another tent. I didn't think I was going to get him out of those brambles. Let's get him down there. performing okay. Can't fast. Yeah, that was on two grams of corn. And it's certainly got a lot more power in this rod than the one I caught here last time. This might be the biggest of the lot. stopped to chat to a guy who was just leaving so that's why I didn't have the video on when I brought the um, fish over to the net because I'd switched it off while I was talking to him and then forgot to put it back on. So. Anyway, another nice tench. He hadn't done much good so um, yeah I don't think it's as big as that the last one but there we go. Mm, yeah, okay, I'll put you back. I'll put you back. Mm, lovely condition. I say, there's very rarely much mouth damage, which is nice. Mm. All right, let's put you back in, shall we? Feel quite heavy actually, let's just put him on the scales. It's a very deceiving weight of fish, isn't it? Yeah, it's still set on that. 14 ounces for the scales. Oh no, it's only three and a half and 14 ounces off. It's not even three pounds. So still, it's worth looking. Well, I think that's a good time to pack up, to be honest. I won't be greedy. Mm. 
Well, I think it's fair to say that that exceeded my expectations. <laughs> Four nice tench, one tench lost the uh, hook pull, but um, yeah, that, that, that really did um, exceed um, what I expected today. Very, very hot day, water low, coloured, um, probably low in oxygen as well with all this hot weather. So, um, But the fish were in good condition, they didn't seem to be in any distress, which was good. Um, the first tench was a diddy, which was nice to catch in a way. Shows their small ones coming along and a very, very, very small crucian carp followed that. But um, yeah, and at the end there, I was all ready to go. I'd, I'd given up really, and then that last tench came on and um, almost lost it in the brambles, but we didn't, so that was good. So, a last minute decision to come out today um, improvised bait, uh, sweet, sweet corn and cheese paste, that's what I had at home. And just a few hours, but it's now got incredibly hot. I think it must be getting on 27, 28 degrees. Really, really hot. Um, so it's time to pack up and go home. So anyway, um, thanks for watching, as always. And uh, apologies for the fact I've been away a couple of weeks or so. Um, well, not away, but not, not fishing um, for various reasons. So um, if you enjoyed that, um, perhaps you'd like to give me a like, as, as normal, or as usual, whatever. And um, thanks again for the subscribers, uh, it's great to have people subscribing to the channel and thank you for the comments, um, I do receive a few comments, so um, yeah, great. So uh, as usual, um, it's sort of until the next time, the, the next time might be a bit interesting actually because this weekend, Saturday, um, provisionally, if it, if it happens, I'm going down to the... Um, uh, Offord and Buckton Club Waters where the um, guy down there wants to make a little video uh, to encourage uh, youngsters uh, in fishing and he's asked me if I would help him do that so um, as I say we'll see how that works out I, it'll probably come on my channel I'll put it on my channel um, uh, yeah really something new for me something different <laughs> anyway as I say um, that's all for now so um, until the next time it's uh, as usual uh, thanks for watching and cheers <laughs>